Hello, I'm Ann Gritch, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this segment of the oral history of the Diocese of San Jose. And with me is one of the great ladies of our diocese, Maureen Ariente, who has been with the diocese since the very beginning, the first week practically. So we're very much looking forward to hearing Maureen's story. So Maureen, welcome. Thank you, Sam. It's good Thank to you. see you. It's good to be here. Thank you. Now, you were born and raised in Santa Clara County, is that right? I was born in San Jose at the old San Jose Hospital that isn't here anymore. More. <laughs> and um, I uh, attended St. Patrick's Grammar School uh -huh. and was taught by the presentation nuns. And then I graduated and went on to Notre Dame High School for four mm -hmm. years, graduated there, then went on to Heels Business College and graduated from there as, in a, as a secretarial mm -hmm. course, took a secretarial course wow. and graduated. But and, always in San Jose? In Santa Clara County. County. When I first graduated from um, Heels, I got a job at the Santa Clara County Fire Marshal's office. And that was working down at Civic Center and uh -huh. as a secretary to the fire marshal and his deputies. And then I was married at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, then I became pregnant. And in those days, um, you could not work for the county after you were five months pregnant. Uh, and so after five months. my fifth month of pregnancy, then I had to quit. But it was a job that I loved and mm. writing up fire reports and uh. all kinds of fire incidents and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that was my very first job. And then I had the baby and stayed home. Um, and uh, that time we lived in San Jose. And then in 1964, Gary's business took him to Mountain View. And that's when we moved to Mountain View oh, for 25 years. years. Okay. And um, my kids went to St. Simon's, uh, St. Francis, Francis High School, yeah. and all five graduated from there. Yeah. Now, if I'm, am I right in remembering that some of the San Jose, the diocesan folk you went to school with, was it like Donna Rader? Were there some? Donna Rader went to Notre, I went to Notre Dame with Donna mm -hmm. Rader. I went to Notre Dame with Joan Buckley. Oh yes. Uh -huh. Chuck Buckley's wife. Um, I'm trying to think who else was there at that time. Terry Mays. Ah, okay. Um, they were, in, so, Donna Raiders and Joan Buckley were in the same class, but two years ahead of me. Uh -huh. And then Terry Mays was two years behind I me. Uh -huh. um, Bernice Nefstad's kids went to St. Simon's. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I knew mm -hmm. her, her from church sure. and school. Um, I'm trying to think, I mean, different ones came and went over oh, the sure. years sure. that I had gone to Notre Dame with. Yeah. and. Uh, now, were you, and Chris, you were a mom of six. Were you involved in the parish at all? Oh, yes. I ah. taught CCD. Oh, did you? Yeah, I taught CCD for eight years. And then um, I, at St. Francis High School, I got a, um, one of the brothers needed help with bulk mailing. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Mountain View Post Office and took a class on bulk <laughs> How mailing. How fun, wow. <laughs> and then I got a job as a, a bulk volunteer, mailer? <laughs> yeah, as a bulk mailer. And of course, it was alumni and students and parents and everybody. And so we would mail about, you know, 10,000 to 20,000 um, pieces of mail at a time. And I would haul them down to Mountain View Post oh. Office in my station wagon. And, you know, they all had to be marked A, B, C, D all their little notes and things. And uh, I got, I would get a volunteer, group of volunteer mothers mm -hmm. from of St. Francis students. And uh, we would uh, come in the morning and, and start in. And in those days, there was no collating. They didn't have a collating. No, you, you collated. <laughs> well, we put the papers around the table and then the mothers would walk around. There was a stapler, a mother that staplered on the end and we would pick up the papers and then walk around and give them to her and she would pack and we would take the next group of papers and walk around and i did that for oh i don't remember how many years 
I hope they gave you coffee while you. No, were doing all Brother this. Raymond was there at the time, and he was a wonderful cook. Oh. So he, when everybody else was fed, he would have the mothers. We called ourselves the mother stuffers, <laughs> and so we would go over to the brother's house, oh, good. and he would give us lunch. All right. And then we would go back and finish, and then everybody, every mother would have to leave by the time school was Oh, out. God, pick up the kids. Yeah, go pay. And by that time, we were through. We would have 10,000, 20,000 pieces of mail and trays ready to go. And uh, then it was at that time, I did that in the late, in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And then it was at St. Francis Brothers' house the, one morning when I was there, having coffee that one of the priests that was at the school father wheeler came in and said did everybody hear uh -huh. i was going to ask you about this. yeah did everybody hear and we said hear what and said we have a diocese we have a new bishop and we were saying what 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 you know no 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 january this was january, january 27th 1981 yeah. yeah and so then um I heard, I, one of the brothers told me, he said, you know, you, you're doing such a good job with your stuffing uh, project that you have going. Why don't you see if they're hiring? So, um, no kidding. Yeah. And so it was at that time, I knew Father Milani mm -hmm. from uh, Notre Dame High School ah. because he was ordained in 1953. And uh, at that, he, at, shortly after his ordination, he was assigned to Sacred Heart Church on Willow Street okay. in San Jose as an associate. Mm -hmm. And so um, he used to come to Notre Dame High School one day a week to um, teach uh, freshman religion, religion or sophomore religion, whatever it was. It was a, a priest had to come mm -hmm. every week what grade, whatever grade you were in, mm -hmm. you had a priest one day a week. And so um, I had gradually kept in touch with him over the years, you know. Um, and then, so I thought, when I saw on a bulletin or something, or in the newspaper that he was chancellor, I thought, oh, my old friend, Father, Father Milani. <laughs> and so I wrote him a letter and I said, Father, I understand that you're chancellor in the diocese and blah, blah, blah. And there's a new bishop and so on. And I live in Mountain View, which is only 10 minutes from the seminary and so on. And um, so he said, uh, so I said, I would like to apply for a job. I haven't worked in... <laughs> this many years other than well, mother here. stuffing. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, pretty soon, uh, a week later, I get a phone call from Karen Connor. And um, by the way, she just died uh. um, in February. Um, and so she was acting as his secretary. Uh -huh. And so she said, Mr. Barton would like you to come in for an interview. He's just gotten your resume from Charlie one of the Barton. priests. Yeah. So um, I said, oh, okay, I'll mm -hmm. come, you know. So I did. I went. And, excuse me. And Charlie hired me that day. <laughs> How fun. Yeah, that day he hired me. He says, you're hired. You know, Father Milani brought me down your letter and gave it to me and said, you know, he knew you from the school days and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, so what? That's how I got the job. The job. Now, That's who did you work for? At, Charlie. At first, I started. At Karen Connor was uh, Monsignor Mitchell's secretary, mm -hmm. Father Mitchell's secretary, and she, at one at one point, a couple weeks later, Bishop needed a secretary, so Father Mitchell came in. We were in a secretarial pool. There was. Belva. Oh, yes. Um, Jane? Was Jane there? No, not Jane. Kathy Dwyer. Ah, okay. Fonsenior yeah. Dwyer's yes, sister. Right. She was the first payroll person. Um, Father Mitchell came into the secretarial office pool that we had because there was other secretaries that were hired after me. This is weeks later. And he <laughs> said to Karen Connor, you go upstairs and be Pierre's secretary, which she was mortified. 
And then he said, Belva, you be the secretary for the tribunal, and Maureen, you be secretary for me. I said, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, we had Selectric three typewriters. Oh, yes. And um, they were fun. They were fun. Well, they had the automatic erase thing, right? The little X yes, that you could yes. use. That and was big so time. that's how we started. And then Charlie, he he would come in and pick out anybody that he thought was ready to do something for him. And he gave me the name of Precious. And he would come in with, Precious, I need you to uh, rectify the bank statement to, to do all the checks. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, it isn't a bite Bob, and he said, it is now. <laughs> so every time he would come in with precious, mm -hmm. I knew I was going to be doing something, something. different. <laughs> but no, Monsignor Mitchell was the best boss I ever had, ever, ever, ever had in 31 years. That's great. Yeah, he was so organized. You knew, oh. he knew what you were doing, and if he had a project, he'd give it to you three weeks ahead of time. Say, finish it by this date and this, and every night, everything was filed before we went home. Came in the next morning to a clean desk, clean oh, slate. Ideal. <laughs> and then we had another one that followed him, and he was. Not as good. Not as good, right. but the best boss I ever, yeah. ever had. And you knew where you stood. You oh, knew yes. where you stood all the time. Mm -hmm. You would go in with a question, and you'd get an answer, and that would be your answer. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd just go back and say yes or no or whatever. And then we had a little fun with Doris. Doris Haley was the... The receptionist. Right. Right. And she would get phone calls that were just... You know, screwy Louie, when you're working that job, you just get the goofiest phone calls. Well, she decided she was going to give me this, the phone calls. Oh, okay. Okay, so one day I, um, I get this phone call from Doris, and uh, the question that lady had was, how much, how much are the flowers in a wedding, for a wedding? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> How did, what, what do I know? I was just, Call a florist. <laughs> I was just starting. And uh, so anyway, I went into Monsignor Mitchell's office and I said, excuse me, Father, but I have a lady on the phone that wants to know how much the flowers are for a wedding. And so, uh, no, I take that back. How much is the stipend? Oh. How much is the stipend for a wedding? And so his answer was, how much do you pay for the flowers? Uh -huh. That was it. Uh -huh. That's the stipend. That sounds very much like Monsignor Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. I that's take great. it back. It no, was that, backwards. No, but that's fine. Yeah. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah. 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 But uh, no, they were, yeah. they were good. Because you were working for Monsignor Mitchell when I came on board, which right. was 1987. Yes. Because we were still at St. Joseph's Seminary right. then. Right. I was four, four years for Mitchell, three years for Bob Summers. Mm -hmm. And then when we were moving to Lenzen, Doris didn't want to come. Uh. So Bishop asked me, Bishop Dumain asked me mm -hmm. to take the phones. And I was really upset because to me that was a put down oh. from a secretary to mm -hmm. a receptionist. But Sister Patricia Marie said, try it for a year. And then if you don't like it, go back to being a secretary. And I said, I'll try it. So I did, and I loved it because I got were to terrific. talk to people. Well, and you were the first line of defense or the first person. I mean, you were perfect in that job. And I got to see Bishop every day. Yeah. Every day, because he right never... Right off that elevator. Oh, he no, came, he, he didn't take the, the elevator. Yeah. He took the stairs. He took the stairs to come up, mm -hmm. and he took the stairs to go down. And he always said, good morning, and he always said, good night, as he passed my desk mm -hmm. to go out. So that was a privilege, mm -hmm. a real privilege. I got to see him every single mm -hmm. day that yeah. he came in, that he mm -hmm. came in. But, uh, no, the phone calls are just... Tell us some of them. Well... There was one at the seminary days when um, some lady called and said, can we eat meat on Friday? And I said, yes. Well, when did that change? 
And I said, well, I don't remember the exact year, but I said, I think it was around 62 when Vatican II was out. Well, nobody told me. <laughs> and I said, well, uh, do you go to church? No, but my sister goes to church. And we went for dinner over there last Friday night, and she had a roast. And I told her, we couldn't eat the roast because that was meat on Friday. And, and we got into an argument, and my husband and I left. And I thought, <laughs> is, this what God, is this what Jesus wanted? You know, to fight over a roast for dinner? Oh, she was so upset. She was literally, I'll, I always remember that story. I always remember it. Nobody told me. Nobody but I told don't go to church. me, and I don't go to church, but my sister goes to church every Sunday, and her sister knew she could serve a roast. Right, oh, but she never bothered to no. tell her. <laughs> no, and the other time I remember that was a horrible time was we were on Linzen, and it was when Bishop Dumaine, uh approved the Rachel program. Uh-huh, Project Rachel. Project Rachel. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it got printed in the Mercury News over, I don't know how they printed it, mm -hmm. but that morning I came in and my phone was ringing off the desk. And they were calling Bishop all kinds of names. Uh, he was a fag, he was this, that, the other thing. This is terrible, these women did this, they did that. And oh. finally I had to call for help because I couldn't handle everything. I guess not. And so Father Boyle, who was there at the time, came up from his office downstairs and said, Maureen, give me the calls. Good. I said, well, Father, I these people are, are wow. odd, off the wall. They're just, they're just, whatever the, Merc, however the Mercury News put it, it, it they just went bonkers. And there was one story that came in that on that, I remember, that um, this woman called and she was, she was belligerent with swearing and I hung up on her. And she called me back and I said, she said, you know, you hung up on me. And I said, I know I did because you're swearing at me and you are saying terrible words. I said, I don't want to hear these. Mm -hmm. I said, I will listen to you if you talk to me, but I don't want you calling me names. I have nothing to do with any of this. So she said, all right. And so she went on and wanted to know what the Project Rachel was. And so I tried to explain it to her that women who have had abortions and they're forgiven and this is a way that healing, healing and mm -hmm. so on. Well, then there's this big silence on the other end and she starts to cry. And I said, are you okay? And she said, I'm so sorry, dear. I'm so sorry that I talked to you that way, that I said those things to you. She said, my cousin had an abortion 30 years ago, and she's never been the same. She never leaves her house. She never does wow. this. And I said, well, now maybe you can offer her some help. Mm -hmm. I said, but, but it, it's a good Thing. it's a good program I said it it will it will help people oh thank you dear thank you I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and so anyway I mean you know you, you got everything thrown at you I hung up on more people because of language sure and, well good for you you don't have to take that yeah I don't have to I said I'll listen to you I will mm -hmm. talk to you but I said you're not calling me names and and um, swearing at me because I, I, nothing to do with this. This is not my, right. my thing. And so uh, anyway, but. Your job, Maureen, really was a ministry when you think of it. I mean, you really took care of situations like this poor lady. Well, yeah, I tried to help people mm -hmm. when I could. I really, I would listen to them. You know, I would try to help them. I will try, try to, um, uh, you know, uh, do anything I could. Um, the, the one thing that really irritated me and would bring me to tears sometimes is when people would call, and nothing against you, Father, but 
people would tell me they couldn't get a priest. Uh -huh. And that would really upset me. Yeah. That would really upset me um, because, uh, you know, they would call this church and that church and and this one's too busy and that one's not here and or there's no the answering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, and it's, it's just... Um, um, they would be crying. Some of them would be crying on the phone. They, their grandmother wanted a priest. Mm -hmm. and uh, I, There were several priests that would come in that would give, in later years, would give me their cell phone numbers. Lovely. And then would say to me, call me. Mm -hmm. There was one priest at St. Clair's when it was Jesuit. I can't think of his name. But he, would, he, he gave me his cell phone number and he gave Lima in Santa Clara his cell mm. phone number because Lima would call me and want me to get a priest. And I'm thinking, I can't even get a priest for somebody that calls me, you know. And so several priests, I, I must say five or six of them, gave me their cell phone numbers. That's great, yeah. And, and our cell phones were just coming in. Coming in. Yeah. And they would say, call me. I will come any time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I will. Um, but I mean, when you get somebody on the phone that's crying, that that's, yeah. you know, it, they're it, not mad, no, they're it crying. Your heart. Yeah. You know, and grandma wants a priest. I know anybody could say a rosary and, you know, anybody can stand up there and do that, but grandma wants a priest sure. and, and, and then, you, you, you know, they couldn't get somebody for the cemetery, so, you know, I'd get calls for that. Well, I couldn't. What could I do? I couldn't help them. And can Bishop help them? And can this help them? And yeah. what do you do? Yeah. You know, what do you do with it? You just. Um, what was it like with the major things like uh, when we had Renew or. Now, you weren't, you weren't answering phones at the earthquake, right? You were still working with Monsignor in 89. In 89. I was. No, you were. We were already gone. Yeah, we were. That's right. We were did down. Did we get a, a lot of phone calls around the time of the, at the after the earthquake? Um, no, not really. Not really. Not really. No, not really. Um, I think everybody was trying to recover. Yeah. In their own way, if they had some kind of, you know, damage or anything. I remember being at the seminary when the phone didn't ring. You know, it didn't ring because they didn't know we were up there. <laughs> 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 they were didn't know we were up there, and then um, I remember when uh, Monsignor Mitchell uh, had us vote for uh, days off after Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know that we had that long that was wonderful vacation after Christmas, and he had all of us vote on it. Mm -hmm. I remember very well when the Vietnamese attacked the seminary, that and was they quite attacked. A time. Yeah, Father Paul. Uh, they ran and tried to run him off the road. They flattened all his tires. They were up there with their things of blood out on the cement. That was a tough time. We were. They broke in through the windows of the seminary in the basement and got in. They were in the hall. They were throwing chairs. And uh, Father Paul was staying at the cemetery at the time. And he, they, they came with their whole entourage fighting everybody and Father Paul was going down the hall past our office and I said to him get in here and he looks at me kind of funny I said Father Paul get in here so he gets in here and I said get under my desk see my desk it's there get under it and so he did and I said stay there don't move. Don't so this come is out. a mom talking. <laughs> yeah, don't come out. Don't anything. So we took and we locked the door to the secretarial office and uh, I said, yelled at Charlie, we're staying in here. We're not opening the door for anybody. And, and uh, but we hid Father Paul. And so he thanked me many <laughs> times yeah. afterward. But they came with their... Oh, chairs. They were throwing chairs from the room 1000 yeah, those down the hall. Oh, my God, times. it was terrible. Yes. They had to lock Bishop Domain up somewhere yeah. because they would have, you know, they were out to kill him. No. Now, speaking of Bishop Domain, can you tell us some stories about him? Um, one I remember when we were on Lindzen, um, we, before we remodeled, and you know how you had to go by, come into his office and go over, mm -hmm. you know. And my desk was here. 
Well, he came out of his office, went by my desk, and I guess he had to use the restroom or go somewhere, somebody's office somewhere. And in the meantime, people were coming in and out Father T to see Father Tucker. Da -da 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 -da. And so pretty soon I'm sitting at my desk and I hear this from the door. And I, my desk was this way and the door was, I said, come in. <clears throat> come in. The door is open. Come in. And I thought, oh, who is out there? Who is out there that can't hear me to say, come in to the office? Well, I got up from my desk, went around, and saw that the door was locked and untwisted the thing and opened it, and it was Bishop <laughs> Oh, dear. And I said, oh, oh Bishop, Bishop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll try. And he says to me, I'll try not to take this personally. <laughs> That's, that is such a Bishop Dumaine statement, isn't it? Yeah, I'll try not I'll to take, take this, this personally. personally. I said, well, I don't, you left. The door was open. I don't know who locked it, but somebody locked it in the meantime of going in and out. Um, I don't remember. I'm trying to think. Um, I just remember we would have chancery-wide staff meetings, and he was very that this was the diocesan family. This was something right. that was always important to him. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And the Christmas parties. The Christmas parties. With the gray sweater. Yes, <laughs> yes. I remember the first Christmas party was the first Christmas party ever. Uh, the thing was from like t one to three or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, one of the guests arrived at about... Five to three, ten to three, oh. and so came in thinking they were uh -huh. going to be part of this thing, and uh, he turned around and said, "The party's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go." So okay, she turned around Rather and left. left. Yep. Yeah, one to three meant one to three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. But no, it was you know there were there was there was some. You know, good stories. There were Father Boyle was a big Monsignor Boyle was a big help to me. Yeah, tell us about that. He was a big help in so many ways that he would um, he would take the calls. Mm -hmm. You know, he would the he's, touchy calls. The touchy calls. He would say to me, you know, well, you're going to get uh, calls on this today or uh, this next week. So a heads up. Huh? Yeah, and so um, you know, give them to me if you don't feel comfortable with them give them to me. And that was a big relief because, I mean, you know, people are awful on the phone, you know, because nobody can see you. So you can just yeah. say anything you want. And oh, the, sometimes the vocabulary would just be awful. And I, like I said, I would just hang up. Good for you. Did just, you get some nice calls? I did get some nice calls. Um, they, I got nicknamed the voice of the diocese oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you were so good. Though. You know, but, um, you know, I like people, so it was good to... People always felt that you had nothing but time for them. I don't know how you did that. Because you'd get calls going, but you never rushed people. Yeah, well, it, I tried not to. I tried to answer all their questions if I could. You know, or else send them to where you're supposed to. Yeah. Send them to you know where yeah. where they were supposed to mm -hmm. go, but it's it's a tricky balance sometimes sure. in trying to, you know, keep the people happy and 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 if the parish isn't cooperating with the people, then yeah, you know, you're stuck. Do you remember we had Ann Creech and Ann Gritch? Yes, and you remember. You you would yeah. say, do you want liturgy or benefits? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, um, uh, I always said Maureen Carilla, Carilla became a, a car because of the Carilla. You know, Carilla. Uh -huh. And uh, Father Shea became Japanese because people would call him what? Father Shia. Oh, Shia, right. Father Shia. Uh -huh. And um, who was the other one? You became a serial. 
and oh. grits. Oh, I see. Grits. Oh, yeah, like grits. grits. That's right, grits. Right. And I'm <laughs> trying to think who else became something. It, you know, but it was just, at one time, there were three Marines. Mm -hmm. And so Bishop nicknamed us his Marine Corps. I <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> but uh, he was always very pleasant to me. I never had mm -hmm. a problem with him. He was always very friendly and, mm -hmm. you know, always said good morning, always said good afternoon or have a good night or something, yeah. you know, and uh, so never, never had a bad time with, really never had a bad time with anybody that I can remember um, over the years. Um, it just, you know, I, but it was, it was fun. It was fun. At, when we started at the seminary, there was only, there was sixteen of us. Yeah. And uh, look at the changes that you have seen. In oh the yeah. Time that you were there. Oh yeah. Huh? Because and the been... seminary was the best. Those four years or seven years, seven years were the best. That was the real semblance of working church. Mm. Because Can you say you, a little more about that. Um, you had the you had the chapel. You yeah. had the the religious things on the wall. The first month I was there, I just about broke my neck trying to look at all the pictures down the hall of all the priests that had ever graduated right from St. Joseph's. Yes, yeah. and I every day on my lunch hour, when I finished lunch, I would go down and try to read. The names and see how how who was who and and how you could recognize right them now. how I could recognize <laughs> them and that that was fun. I can imagine. And then I enjoyed my my help to Father Tucker. Mm -hmm. He would have his clients come in and yeah. sit and wait, and so I would always try to help them and and uh, serve them coffee or water and mm -hmm. make sure they. Or comfortable. We're comfortable. Yeah. Because they would come in a nervous wreck. Sure. You know, and some of them I recognized, and they recognized me, and they were embarrassed, and just, hey. Yeah. You know, it's no big deal. No big deal. That's right. You know, well, you're here, and mm -hmm. he's a good man. And then he'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Good, good man. He was terrific. That is good. I always yeah. re mm -hmm. remember my times with him, too. I yeah. enjoyed him. He was with us for quite a while. He was. He was with us from the seminary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He yeah. and, um, let's see, uh, Jerry Dewar. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, is that a name from the past? Yeah, Jerry yeah. Dewar. And they were two good men, mm -hmm. two good men. And I got calls for Tucker for years after he left. Mm. Want, people wanted to know where he was, how they can get in touch with him. And the poor man is sick. Yeah. And so, you know, he's in Texas and, um, you know, just yeah, not hard. well. Yeah. And, uh, but he helped many people. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, what was it like for you when Bishop uh, McGraw came? Oh, it was great. It was great. Yeah, he was um, he was Irish, and I'm from an Irish family. My mm -hmm. mother was born in Ireland. Ah. I was wishing she could have been alive yeah, wouldn't that have been down nice? the street because yeah. she would have loved that. He would have got a loaf of Irish bread every week, <laughs> you know, because he, my mother would have had him down for dinner and, you know, the different things. But no, that was, that was well, great. You remember the 17 months where we had the two bishops, yes. how easy that was as far as the transition was just yep. smooth as silk. Yes, very much so, yeah. very much so. And, um, you know, they were just... I don't know. I can't explain. They were just good days. The days at the seminary, we got our lunch every day. That part was wonderful. Wonderful. We got our lunch every day. and Barbara was the, the lady, remember, who kind of oversaw the dining room. Right, yeah. right. And oh, the other name that I got, the other nickname Charlie Barton gave me was Mrs. Juan Valdez. Oh. Um, in those days, there was a coffee commercial for That's Juan right. Valdez. Yes, the Colombian coffee. The Colombian coffee. And so at the seminary, we didn't have a coffee pot right away in our office. And so when Charlie had visitors come in or Mitchell would have visitors come in, I had to go get a, a tray, a, a walk over to the dining room and get a tray of coffee and sugar and cream and so on and bring it back to their office to serve the guests. 
And so um, uh, when the coffee was needed, Charlie would come in to me and say, Oh, Mrs. Valdez, Mrs. Juan Valdez, you need to go over to the kitchen and get us some, some coffee. coffee. <laughs> I was precious. I was Mrs. Mrs. Juan Valdez. Valdez. I don't know you who. You were part of the Maureen Corps. Uh, yeah, I can't remember who else I was, but it was, it was, it was, some, he was funny. He was the funniest. He man. was, he had a natural yeah. wit. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He had it. And we kept in touch for years mm -hmm. after, and then yeah. he passed. And, yeah. Uh, but he was... He was a New Englander. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep, he was. Mm -hmm. And then there was another time when we were all... Um, oh, the, my big thing. My big thing. This is... I was thinking of this the other day. Um, Sister Marcella yeah. was with us in the beginning. Right. She and she had the catechetical right. thing. Right. And so um, she came down one morning about 9.30 and came into the secretarial pool. And so she said, you know, I want to invite all you ladies over to uh, the chapel at uh, 1230 because I'm having my catechetical mass for the year and uh, for the beginning of the year and Bishop Dumaine's going to say it. And so uh, you're welcome to come. Oh. We, well, sister, thank you so much. So there was five of us, and we were just elated. We were going to have Mass with Bishop Dumain. He was going to say Mass and this and that. So we never knew he was always late. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know that part of the story. So we get over there on time, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, mm -hmm. and we're waiting. So finally he comes in about 1230. And he starts the Mass. Of course, it goes on and on and on and all the the communion. And so, well, we hadn't had lunch. So we go on over to the dining room and we have lunch. And we're, oh, we're so elated. We're just talking. Chatting away. Yeah, we had lunch. We had Mass with Bishop and blah, 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 this and this. And we just couldn't settle down. Well, then we saunter back <laughs> to the mm -hmm. office. <laughs> And Charlie's in the hallway with his hands on his hips. And he said, where have you girls been? Oh, Charlie, we just had mass with Bishop Dumaine. It was wonderful. Blah, blah, blah. Well, if you want to go to mass, go on Sunday. <laughs> I don't care if it's the bishop. Yeah, I don't care if it's the bishop. If you want to go to Mass, go on Sunday. Well, we were shot down like a, a, a balloon that popped. And so we said, well, what happened? The phones have been ringing Wait. off the hook, and no one's been answering them, and Mitchell's been yelling at me. Where are they? Where is everybody? That's a great story. Well, we went to Mass with the bishop. bishop right? <laughs> Sister Marcella invited us. Yeah, we were invited. Oh, God. Mm. It was just, you know, and then another time we were all reading, reading the bulletin board, and Charlie was in the middle, and all the girls' secretaries were around him, and Mitchell comes, comes down the hall, and he says, have we nothing else to do with our time than stand around and read the bulletin boards? <laughs> There's Charlie and yeah, right. sorry father. <laughs> oh God, we got into trouble. Mm -hmm. We did. We got into trouble a lot because we were so new and dumb and stupid and you know And had fun. And had fun. Yeah. And had fun. But you know, when I heard that there was going to be a bishop in San Jose, I thought, oh, this is great. This is great because we never had a bishop. We always had to have the ones come from San Francisco. Yeah. Confirmation yeah. and, you know. Thank well, you. everyone we've talked to has said Santa Clara County had some energy and enthusiasm yes. and was just yes. different from San Francisco. Yes. It needed yes. to be its own diocese. Yes. Yeah. And, of course, you know, in, in those days, too, Mitchell could see everything that was going on as he, you know, rode around because it was, you know. It's doable. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. doable, and, yeah. and he, that's how he established the building committee and mm -hmm. so on, because so many of the pastors were having other people do their, you know, their painting and their stuff, yeah. and 
um, you know, it, you, you just have to have somebody with responsibility that, sure. you know. There was something that Spoonser did at St. Simon's. I don't remember what he built something. Well, because he was pastor a long time. Yes. Yeah. And he took it upon himself to just do whatever oh, he sure. wanted. He's legendary. Yes. <laughs> and so Mitchell, coming down the hill one day from the seminary, happened to see the thing at St. Simon's. And there was fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> there were fireworks, but, um, you know, yeah. just uh, I, I can't think of all the stories. I mean, no, there's, these are great, though. This is know, wonderful. Just, uh, so you retired in 2012. 12. 31 years. 31 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 31 good years. Mm -hmm. Good years. Well, you made a huge contribution, too. Yeah. I mean, it's just mutual. Good years for you and good years for the diocese. Yeah. Well, I tried. I tried to, you know, I tried to help, but, you no, know. You succeeded. It, it just. The voice yeah. of the diocese. The voice I like of, that. <laughs> the voice of the diocese. Right. Well, yeah. thank you so oh, much you're for welcome. being and here. It was fun it's, to reminisce. Isn't and, it good? Yes. Yeah, to think back and reminisce about those good days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And hope for the future, too. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hope that they can, you know, work out some of their details mm -hmm. and problems and stuff. Well, and things have changed from the Valley of the Heart's Delight to Silicon Valley. I mean, yes. you saw all yeah. of it. And yeah. huge changes. I mean, yeah. Look at the traffic alone. And just oh you know, yeah, you know, oh so yeah. It's a whole different ball game now. Yeah. But I'm very hopeful and very grateful to you. So thank you so thank much. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.